everybody. It's me, Tag, and I'm here with my good buddy, Bushnack. What's up, Bushnack? Oh, hello there. <laughs> I didn't realize you were, you were there. Hello, everyone. This is our uh, Wasteland Predictions uh, 2019 video where we uh, talk about what, what will we come to expect at this year's event. Yeah, Bushnack and I, I think we, we did we start Wasteland the same year because I started in 2013 and I, that was when I met you. Yeah, actually, uh, 2013 was also my first year. I was a, a prominent member of the Bloodrunners tribe at that time. Yeah, they were a big tribe. I remember their reputation quite well. They've, um, I've heard they've since disbanded. Yeah, something like that. They were, they were pretty good, though. I've been left in charge. Oh, really? Are you going to utilize that name in any way? Most likely. I mean, just remember, you're a death cap now. I don't want, I don't want you sniping people for the new Bloodrunners. Hey, well, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> so Bushnack and I met back in 2013. Um, quite a funny story, actually. Maybe we'll share it later. That was both of our first years at Wasteland. And we've been best friends ever since. Also, he's in my tribe, the Death Caps, and the Bloodrunners can't have him back. Oh, I guess that changes my plans then. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just, uh, just, just erase everything on this whiteboard of plans I got. So, uh, this is our seventh year going to Wasteland. Can you friggin' believe that? What? No way. Hold on a second. <laughs> Ow, my fingers. Do your finger maths. <laughs> uh, yeah, wow, it's seventh. It seems honestly like our fourth or something like that. I know, it's it's strange. Um, Wasteland's one of those things that we look forward to every year, and I feel like... Every year, it seems like the last Wasteland just happened and simultaneously was like a million years ago. Ish. Well, technically was, wasn't it? I mean, it was this time last year, and uh, we're going to be staying a bit longer and um, arriving. I forgot to start my Electra Swing music. We're going to be arriving a little earlier this time around, so... Um, it's going to be an interesting experience being there for a week because when Bushnack and I first started going to Wasteland, it was a three-day event. Oh, yeah, you're right. It was, wasn't it? Like, think how much the event has changed since we started going. It was um, a three-day event, which at the time felt long, but now feels like nothing. And uh, it was actually at a different location. That was back in H Park, which is significantly smaller than the site that uh, Wasteland is at now. I honestly still think H Park was better. But, I mean, that's just my personal opinion. Yeah, but th there's the thing. Do you like H Park because of how it was or because of, like, nostalgia? Because it will always have a place in my heart just because all the great memories we have there. Um. But I don't know. This was, wait, was last year the first year at the new site? No, no. We've been at the new site now for, I think this is the third year. Okay, that's, because, like, the one thing that's way different about the new site versus the old is that it's really, really sandy. Um, and it kind of looks surreal and cool at night, but that sand, like, really picks up in the wind in ways that H Park didn't have insane dust storms, I feel like, in the same way. Yeah, last year, a good section of uh, Tent City was picked up by a crazy sandstorm. And unfortunately, uh, there were many casualties. Uh, rest in peace. Never forget. We actually went and wandered about in one of those crazy sandstorms, and it's one of my most treasured memories from last year. Yeah, we almost died. <laughs> and then we ate some tacos. And then we and almost a hot dog. died. And a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> So Bushnack, since you've been going as long as I have at Wasteland, what would you say has changed about you since you first started going that you're at liberty to speak about? Because Wasteland going for a long time does kind of change people, I found. Oosh. That's a good question. Uh, I do have an answer for that, though. I want to say when I first started going to Wasteland, um, I want to say I was a little bit sheltered in terms of like, socially mingling around with different people mm -hmm. i did a lot of wandering by myself and uh when i was with my first tribe of the blood runners um pretty much when the event started they didn't really see too much of me because i just you know just explored all over the entire place <laughs> i i met uh i met, I met the fine folks at titty city <laughs> uh i met david defour cool dude choice 
<laughs> yeah, he's like a wasteland staple. I feel like every first year needs to meet him. Yeah, they had a pretty cool like setup where it was like a shade structure and where it was over, it was kind of like dug out so you kind of crawl in there and hang out. Uh, but I made my uh, a mistake for my first couple like wastelands. I was just covered head to toe in armor completely. <laughs> and I carried around this <laughs> giant axe. And I felt like whenever I went to go hang out at like a different camp, I would have to unequip 50 pieces of armor just to sit down. It looked really cool, though. I will say, like, it was kind of intimidating meeting you the first time dressed like that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, um, I have since uh, not really downgraded, but just kind of upgraded my kit to be much more lighter. I still keep the helmet from my original set and uh, one of the arm gauntlets. But the chest piece, the leg and thigh pieces, um, they're just too much. Not because I can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> it's because when I'm there at the event, I want to be super comfortable in any outfit I have. And I think that it's an interesting goal. Like when I first showed up at the event, I'm like, okay, I'm going to be this. My character is like a cool raider, gladiator guy who gets into pit fights and <laughs> survives on the blood of his whim. <laughs> um, and now I'm just like, okay, cool. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a denizen of the wasteland just kind of like an ambassador for the tribe and I don't really have like all this crazy armor. I invest a lot more, much more into, uh, of my time into weathering my kit <clears throat> and adding different patches and tokens to it. A lot of trinkets. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I wish we did like a side-by-side -side of like original costumes and uh, like after now that would have been good to see because I feel like a lot of people um come into Wayson wanting to wear like a lot of really heavy armor, um, a lot of masks and stuff. Like my first year I wore a mask almost the entire time and I don't know how I did it. Um, it was super uncomfortable and I feel the same way. Like as the years went on, I like lessened the amount of stuff I was wearing. I'm kind of down to just like a shirt, a backpack and some pants and shoes. <laughs> and like, um, I feel the same way too, like about, my weathering has definitely improved. Oh, you got a screen share. Let me click that. Um, there it is. Um, there's Bushnack's kit. Current kit. And this is first year in 2013 with the Bloodrunners and CQB. Oh my gosh, you had so much stuff. There it looks like you're starting to... There, there I am. That was the mask I used to wear all the time. That was when we went to... That was like a bar meetup or something, right? Yeah, it was a bar meetup. <laughs> um, that was when we first started, I think, doing waste. And this is Oktoberfest. Yes, yeah, so I can't control the speed in this application. <laughs> how fast this slideshow goes, but I picked a decent amount of pictures. <laughs> Man, it's uh, it's interesting to see like the early years. We wore so much stuff like covering us, and uh, started, I guess, downsizing the amount of stuff. Um, I feel like the longer people go to the event, the more they figure out what is actually functional in the desert. Um, and having a mask on your face and having heavy armor really, uh, you know, if you want to be comfortable and actually enjoy yourself, it's not ideal. Hey, there's the trophy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> took a lot to earn that. <laughs> yeah, that was a hard fought. That was a hard fought trophy. Do you realize how many of these pictures aren't even at Wasteland? Like, it's weird. Wasteland has become such a part of our lives that we have like all these pictures of us at Wasteland events outside of Wasteland. Like, it's a majority of our life, I feel like, socially. Yes, but it's a really good thing. You know, I'm not, um, after all the time I spent, I can definitely say I have zero wasteland burnout and i'm just i'm always excited for the event there's always something new to do something new to work on and something new to bring to the experience for not just myself but the tribe and the community as well yeah i agree i think um we we're talking about wasteland burnout a lot lately just because um you know it's going to be the last week going into the event and a lot of people are um, expressing like dread of going to the event, which I think is pretty sad. Actually, um, I don't like seeing people 
grow to become like embittered towards an event they used to love, but I can't really relate to it either. Um, I still look forward to it every single year is like one of the highlights of my year for sure. I can see why some of those people have burnout, but I think um, they they focus on some, some smaller, almost pettier aspects of it. They kind of allow themselves to get to that point. Um, but kind of back to an earlier question you asked where how the event has ch kind of changed me. I was very... I was kind of just... It was a very weird time because I, I just got out of a long-term relationship at that point. And I went to Wasteland just getting out of a bad headspace. And I was like, okay, well, here I am. Here's this new crazy event. I've never done anything like this before. And I'm just going to kind of unleash and go beyond my personal boundaries as a person and kind of explore and really get out there for the first time. How did you discover Wasteland, if I may ask? Well, back in the day, I used to hang out with the Bloodrunners tribe. Um, it consisted of Matt, Katie, and Brandon. Uh, we, were, we were pretty good buddies before. We played a lot of D&D &D and different tabletop games like Star Wars X-Wing and such. And um, I, I think I was hanging out with them one day at their place. And my buddy Matt, he comes up to me and he's like, Bush, yo, check it out. You want to go to Wasteland Weekend? <laughs> and I remember him mentioning this event the year prior, back in 2012. But when he told me that time, I think it was like a, literally a week before the event. Oh my god! And I had zero time to prep or go. And I couldn't afford it at the time. And it came up again. Um the following Imp year. But important heard... to note, by the way, back then the tickets were like sixty dollars. Oh <laughs> yeah. Now they're like almost three hundred. Yeah, the the price hike has in increased quite a bit, and I, I will actually want to mention something about the price hike here in a minute. Uh, but we'll we'll get to that bridge. And anyways, he comes up to me again, and this time he lets me know about a month beforehand. He's like, "Hey, wasteland's coming up. We're gonna go. We're gonna have a good time. You want to join us?" And like I said, I just got out of a bad relationship. I was in a bad headspace. And at, at this point, I was like, you know what? I kind of got to change myself. I got to shake up myself a bit here in order to grow and change as a person. So I said, screw it. You know, what, what's this about? Oh, it's post-apocalyptic, Mad Max, Fallout, you know. All this kind of stuff that I really enjoy in movies and video games. And I said, you know, screw it. You know, sign me up. I, I took the time off work. They somehow um, approved uh, like the three days that I had, despite it being less than a month away. Mm -hmm. And uh, I spent night and day. I actually was staying over at their house for a while and just kind of like, you know, I'd come home from work, hang out with them for a bit in the moment. Uh, you know, I got there. We we're, were working on stuff outside, you know, working with power tools, just working on costume stuff, go to sleep wake up on my day off, hanging at third place. And I'm like, okay, I woke up. I remember one time I woke up, I had like four hours of sleep, right? And it's like 8 a.m. <laughs> and I just jumped awake like, oh, 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 okay, I'm still here. And I like, I reached down on the couch I was sleeping on, picked up a hammer that was on the floor and then got my <laughs> shoes on and went outside to work on more wasteland related stuff. Living the dream. <laughs> it was really fun. And then uh, we went to the event and uh, honestly, it's changed everything when it comes to like what I like to do on my spare time, how I feel about certain things. If anyone's listening to this video and you've never done Wasteland before, you're honestly missing out and you need to attend the event if you have a love for the post-apocalyptic. I, yeah, I think if you're even toying with the idea, just make the commitment and go. You know, get out there and don't go with any crazy expectations. I talked to a lot of of friends who are, um, you know, kind of single. They're looking to mingle. <laughs> and they're like, oh, I can't wait to get out there and meet like a girl or something. I'm like, no, no. Don't go with the expectation to get laid or to, you know, to get sexually involved with someone. Just go with the expectation that you're going to meet some cool people and you're going to have a good time. Yeah, you're 100% right on that. Definitely 
go with no preconceived um, expectations and do yourself a favor if it's your first year don't go in making any commitments um i highly recommend your first year not committing to joining a tribe before you meet them um go there and meet all the tribes go don't even make a schedule your first year i would say i would just go and have an adventure and see where it leads you and don't be afraid to venture outside of the main wasteland walls because uh Bush and I have had many adventures late at night going out into Tent City and just exploring out there and meeting all kinds of people. Yeah, I mean, even if you go this year and you really enjoy it, don't go and make a schedule next year. And, you know, for someone that's been going as long as we have, the reason why I say don't make a schedule, because you do not expect to hit every single thing on your list. Mm -hmm. If you go with the expectation that you need to do all these things, you're going to miss one or two of those, and you might feel shitty because of it. I don't even like making schedules. And the only schedule I really have to do this year <laughs> is my own wedding. <laughs> yeah, you, you can't miss that. I'm going to keep a small schedule this year. It's like five things. And I'm not making myself have a hard commitment to any of them besides your wedding. Um, just of shows that I want to see and stuff. Because this year, there's a really good um, like entertainment lineup. And if people are wondering what there is to do at Wasteland besides uh, wander around aimlessly dressed like a post-apocalyptic survivor, there actually is a main stage and many other stages at camps where there's um, different bands and different shows that you can go see. A lot of people yeah. don't know that. Yeah, I would suggest if, if you're going for your first time, the, the three must-see bands that are going to be playing on the main stage. Uh, first is our local favorites, Attack Squad. Definitely. They are superb. They are fun to watch on stage, and their music is incredible. And then uh, DK Zero, and then Three Teeth. Now I haven't bands that are amazing. I haven't listened to Three Teeth yet. I know that when they posted um, that they were coming to the event, like people like went ape shit about it. So I have to catch up and actually listen to their music because it seems like they have a very good following. I'm going to send you, after this, uh, three of their songs that I really do enjoy. I've been listening to them for the past two or three days, and I'm so hyped about them. Man, gone are the years where we used to stay up and see um, Aesthetic Meat Front. I don't think they're coming back, but they were pretty amazing themselves. They were a really strange performance group, and you can see uh, a video of their old performance on my channel. <laughs> Um, do you have, I guess my next question would be, do you have any set expectations this year of um, stuff you want to do? Maybe not necessarily shows you want to see as if it's stuff you want to accomplish. Because I know a lot of people, when they go to Wasteland for a number of years, they have like a, I've seen people post like an achievement log on their Facebook. And I don't know if there's anything that you want to achieve um, yes, yes. There is a show that I definitely need to see. I saw them last year. But for anyone else that's going, or even if you have gone before, stay tuned for the Dickless Rick show. Oh, that's right. That was fucking crazy. Yeah, we were up by like, it was weird because we see no announcement of the Dickless Rick circus on the message boards or anything they just kind of like showed up you saw some of their entertainers at 3 a.m like 2 or 3 a.m kind of just passing by by the main gate late at night and we were hanging out and we we're like oh what's going on over there yeah they looked they looked very um not overdressed for wasteland but they they kind of stuck out so we ended up following them and uh they don't have any social media that i know of so it was nothing, you know, we really expected. So I was surprised that they were coming back this year. Their announcer kind of explained it as like an in-the-moment show, which is why they don't really have a social media presence. You kind of got to be there in the right time. Yeah, I think the only directions, because uh, I posted about this on Facebook and only Dickless Rick can give you real info, but the only thing we know is that they always occur at a crossroad. So we just kind of followed them over and uh, they spur of the moment did something. So if you want to see that show, you're going to have to go to the crossroads or just keep an eye out for them at around 2 or 3 a.m. 
Yeah, I honestly have a feeling they're probably going to take advantage of, like, the darkest night at Wasteland this year and probably have their show then. That's right, because this year is going to be the darkest that Wasteland has ever been. So don't forget your flashlights, you guys, when you go wandering about. Can you believe that there are people that don't, like, do anything at night at Wasteland? Like, people that stay at the hotel and stuff? I get it for medical reasons, but... Otherwise, I don't know why people don't take advantage of that. Because some crazy shit happens at night. Hashtag boomer wastelanders. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing. Um, it's weird looking back on all the time we've spent here. Because um, I was saying earlier that uh, like 90%, well, maybe like 80% of the friends I have now and the people I talk to on a regular basis, I've met because of Wasteland. And most of them are like people that I never would have probably met otherwise, like different ages and from different places. It's kind of crazy. Uh, by the way, um, feel free to screen share your slideshow if you'd like. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. All right, let's see here. If you can't tell, this is my first time on StreamYard here. All right. So these are some photos we're starting out with from the den. I'm not sure if you can see them yet. Do you remember our first time we walked into the den? Yes, I do. <laughs> I can see it, by the way. Okay, good. Yeah, it was, um, I think the first day we, we kind of passed it by because during the day it looks um, very inconspicuous, if I'm saying that right. Um, they have a Garden of Eden sign. And uh, at night, the lights are all lit differently. So it says the Den instead of Garden of Eden. So I think like we walked, we might have went in just to go visit Junktown. Um, but I don't remember being like really struck by it till nighttime. I got a question for you. So what was your idea for, like, the Death Caps? What spurred you to create the tribe? Because that's a pretty ambitious thing to do as, like, a first year, right? Yeah, you know, I don't think I've ever said on this channel what our actual, like, concept is or what inspired it. Um, when I first started, I discovered Wasteland in 2012 um, because they had posted... I guess I was looking... At the time, I was looking for... Um, like Ren fairs and stuff. I was starting to get into that, but it really wasn't my cup of tea. So I wanted to see if there was something that was post-apocalyptic um, because that's my favorite genre and I wanted really niche things. I was really heavily into Fallout at the time, but I wasn't specifically looking for Fallout events. Um, I ended up finding it. And at the time the website had a forum so I joined the forum. The event was like either about to happen or had just passed in 2012. So I missed it. And um, I got really invested in it. I was reading everything up and I was like on that forum every day. And that's actually where we met um, cousin Brucey. It was his first year. He was talking like a lot of the people we know now that are like key players in like the wasteland social circle. I knew on that forum. Um, I remember Jen was on there anyway. So I had a, like a whole year to plan it out and I was obsessing over it and they presented the idea of tribes on there and they were still trying to figure out kind of the tribe system. They weren't really an, an official thing yet at that time. Um, so I was planning on making my tribe, but at the time there were no Soviet themed tribes. And I was like, it's so weird that this is like um, a post-apocalyptic thing. And there was kind of like a weird cold war element to it. I felt like back then, um, because they didn't make the timeline clear. And it was like, oh, the bombs drop. And I was like, there's no like Soviet bad guys. Like you got to have like the cartoon commies come in. And like Metro was a thing. So I kind of fulfilled, filled in that role. And I started scouting people on there to see if anybody would be interested in joining a Soviet themed tribe. And there's a couple people. Um, and then we didn't want to be like outwardly just like straight up a Soviet tribe. Um, and I'm kind of a storyteller just in general. So I wanted to think of something kind of whimsical, kind of non-threatening as opposed to just having straight up commies there. Um, so at the time um, I had been reading a lot about Chernobyl. I was all interested in that. 
because you know that's kind of a big part of post-apocalyptic lore i guess and inspiration and there had been an article posted around about these these spores that grew in chernobyl that they weren't really mushrooms they just called them spores they're called cryptococcus neoformans if anybody's curious and they're a fungus that eats radiation and what was happening was they were it was eating the radiation it was turning the land it was making the land fertile again so that farmers and stuff could possibly farm and they're talking about these these spores and how in the future they could use these at in nuclear wastelands to uh clean the soil and i guess bring it back to like farmable fertile conditions and i really latched on to that idea and uh you know having just like a fungal spore that looks like nothing isn't a good representation so i ended up exaggerating it to look like mushrooms and our whole backstory came together of uh i was a russian nuclear scientist of some kind that had been sent overseas to spread these radiation eating mushrooms and basically save the land and uh return it to farmable conditions it was like a gift from russia to america and uh all the people that wanted to join at that time uh kind of had their own ideas of what they wanted to dress up as and it was weird at the time i remember in the tribe section of the forum they really wanted everybody in the tribe to dress the same which is kind of weird um they really wanted everybody to look similar like to have a cohesive look as far as a tribe which isn't a bad idea um but nobody wanted to go along with that because everybody who was joining the tribe it was their first year they wanted to you know express themselves so we came up with the backstory that like okay well everybody that is in the tribe is a mercenary that's from like america so like I was from Russia and I have these like bot mercenaries to help protect me while I spread these spores and everybody could come up with their own backstories and have creative freedom that way. And people really responded to it and um, latched onto it. And that's how I met Cody and um, a couple other people that are still in the tribe today. So that's kind of how the death caps idea came about. Wow. It's very inspirational. <laughs> Hey, we got Specs in the chat. Specs says, oh, dude, I remember the first time I saw you. Super memorable. Standing in line for bounty hunting and your mask your mask totally tripped me out and instantly cemented you in a place in my super terrible memory. Now, I don't know if he's talking about me or you because we both wore masks at that time. Um, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, but yeah you're, you, that is very true. I wonder. Uh, Specs, would you mind um, confirming because we were both in the bounty hunting line, I think. <laughs> yeah, and I remember I used to wear, you still wear the same mask. It's kind of your staple, but the mask that I wore had a red visor. And I remember at night taking that like mask off. My like vision was completely red <laughs> for like at least an hour after. Like there's no way it was that good for my eyes. Ah. The Soviet masks. Cool. Yeah, I have that thing shoved in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> in a crate just like an indiana jones right yeah it's just kind of tucked away why, but yeah, why that's... did you bring out that mask anymore it was a very iconic appearance for you i think i just got bored of it um i wanted to be able to drink without having to tip it up because i remember um i it's weird when i first went to wasteland i wasn't a big drinker um now i drink a lot but um, <laughs> it was always a pain having to like lift it up to drink and stuff. And it was like kind of killing my vision. It wasn't very comfortable is what it comes down to. And I think after a while, I just wanted to be comfortable. And at the time I used it as a social crutch um, to kind of hide behind because I didn't like people looking at my face. And I think I've come out a little bit now. Um, I've kind of broadened my social horizon. So I don't really need it as much anymore. If that makes sense. Hmm. Oh, look, he's uh, talking about the clown doll. You had some like interesting <laughs> things that you always brought with you, huh? Yeah, that like, yeah. doll. You brought Pearl one year. <laughs> I did bring Pearl one year. I brought her specifically because my one buddy Kelsey couldn't make it that year, and I brought her as a as a surrogate. And she still hasn't come back to Wasteland since then. That poor that Pearl doll. That Pearl doll saw a lot of shit. 
<laughs> I don't think she would have survived another year. Let me ask you this. If you've never started the Death Caps tribe, what tribe could you see yourself joining? Ooh. What tribe would I want to join or what could I fit into? Uh, how about both? <laughs> I think that I would definitely be in Junktown. Um, I really like, I think I speak for both of us when I say that they're, they're pretty amazing people. I've really clicked with them. Um, we always say that the, like the Junktown tribe is pretty much death caps tribe. Like we're kind of family as far as wasteland, we stick together. Whenever you see Junktown, you can always see like a couple death caps hanging out there. Um, I think I would fit with them very well. Um, it's weird to say though, because if I had never made the tribe, I don't know if I would have ever actually met them or not. Um, but I think I would fit in with them pretty well. I guess it's the one that I would want to join had I not uh, founded the Death Caps. I'm, I'm trying to think of any other tribe because that's like one of my favorite ones. I would like to be a part of Zeke's actually. Um, they're relatively new though. What about you? Um, you know, I always really liked Junktown as well, I think would be my go-to pick. Like if I were to just change the timeline and kind of rearrange things, I think it'd be Junktown. I think I probably would have found them eventually just because of my adventurous like spirit and just finding like, I'm always up super late. No, no matter what, who I go with or what I do at the event, I'm always up super late. And I think I would have like instinctively found the biggest party, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was oh yeah, I know. At 3 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so I think at some point I would have found Junktown. Um, I do really like the pugs. Yes. I, I I really like them, but I don't see like their costume getup really working in my favor. Yeah, I I don't think their theme would fit mine aesthetically very well. They are a great example of a tribe where they kind of all dress similar, and it works really well for them. Yeah, it totally fits their theme. Um, it fits the theme of Wasteland. They all look great in it. And I think it represents them very well. I love um, Wild Mule. Oh, yeah. I love Wild Mule, too. Spec says, I could see you both in Junktown. Also, maybe the Gladiators. Oh, I would break in pieces if I was in the Gladiators. Oh, I'm too unfit for that. Thank you, Spec, bro. Well. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm very flattered. But when he said that, I just had like a vivid image of myself with like a tooth flying out of my mouth. <laughs> it's getting thrown to the ground. For me, it was an image of me fighting... Um... Uh, what was his name? The guy that had the beer keg like sledgehammer. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I think that's pictured like the back of my head getting smashed with that and instantly <laughs> dying. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly think that if I wasn't a part of the death caps, I'd probably be tribeless, actually. Mm. You know, I thought about that as well. I never really experienced being tribeless before. Like I went into the event already having um, the death caps as a plan. So I never really experienced that. Um, it's always interesting though. Like um, since getting rid of that mask, a lot of people don't like recognize me anymore. I think they're starting to now because now I've spent like maybe two years without wearing a mask and stuff. And um, people are starting to know, I guess, my face now. But um, it's kind of nice not having... Are having some kind of anonymity. So if you do value that, maybe you should wear a mask to the event, but pick something very comfortable. You know, I do like going back to like the tribeless idea. I've always entertained the idea of like going to the event solo, pitching a tent in tent city somewhere, and just kind of like having the complete freedom and of like, you know, exploring everything at your own whim. Yeah, I think um, this year I have way less obligations, um, which is nice. So I'm, I'm hoping to kind of recapture that feeling of uh, being able to just wander and do what I want. I was really, um, I really wanted to do a try mission this year, but I thought of like the wedding that I have and everything else going on. I'm like, eh, if I do another try mission this year, that requires me to be at the camp at a certain time for. Yeah for whatever reason. And I don't want to tie myself down too much. I want to be a bird. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I agree. This has been a rough year. It's time to cut loose a little bit. 
we've had so many obligations these past couple of years and like we have cool stuff like the saloon and stuff now but i feel like this year it's going to be much more um or much less heavy lifting than we usually have yes and I definitely make sure, by the way, whether you guys are attending for the first time or this is like you've been going since as long as we have, it's important to make that time for yourself where you're not constantly stuck at camp. Like having a mission and stuff like Bushnack was talking about was really fun, but you should never have something that always requires you being at camp. Like have some free time to wander about and stuff because it'll start to, that's what makes people I think get burnt out is it turns into work for them. Specs show up to our camp roughly between 6 and 8 p.m. That's usually around the time I start heading out myself. And um, yeah, you're more than welcome to wander around with us and just do stuff. I'm going to be pretty lost this year in the sense <laughs> that I'm just going to go everywhere. I, I know I've said that like last year and the year prior, but I haven't really committed to it. We had that one year and it was just hot all the time and it was kind of terrible. Yeah, that was 2015. That was absolutely horrible. I will easily say that is probably my like most unfavorite year is the wave is the heat wave. It has one of my favorite memories though. And we Which should one? share some of those. Okay. So <laughs> our buddy Cody, um, who was in the tribe, had had his tent set up real low to the ground. Um, he had like a long shade structure low to the ground, so it's pretty great, like to escape the heat and go in there. And I think me and him were chilling. I can't remember if he was in there with me or not, but I remember me and a couple other people were sitting in there and this crazy dust storm, like they call it the great duster. Um, it picked up and it was absolutely insane. I remember a bunch of people got sucked up in it and there was even like a cell phone warning where they're telling people like seek shelter, like don't even try to get to your camp, go to somebody's camp and seek shelter. Right. So earlier that day, these two girls, it was their first year and they were like wandering around they were like fully dressed up and they had like face paint on. And I remember the one girl had like white face paint and then she had this really cool, like a red gradient. And then she had those contacts that had like the black, um, like the whites of her eyes were black. Mm -hmm. So she was like dressed up to the nines. Right. And her friend was dressed up super nice too. And they were like strutting around, you know, doing the hot chick thing. And then the storm <laughs> wipes, like a gum comes in. We're all hunkering down and I see her and her friend <laughs> struggling through the dust. And they're like holding their shirts up over their mouth. They're like stumbling. And then they they see us and they start like sprinting and like they they like do like a crazy baseball dive like underneath the tent. Like I remember the one chick like landed on my legs because she's like so desperate to get in there. And they oh, were like man. they both got inside and they were just like sputtering and coughing up dust, <laughs> laying down. I just remember like they had been trying to put on some like weird like pseudo English voices or like Australian accents. And I remember there's like, oh fuck it. <laughs> they were like dying from the dust. <laughs> like they couldn't keep their character up anymore. <laughs> 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 like they went in so like badass and ready to be in character and then came back like sputtering children seeking shelter. <laughs> One of them's like, oh, but to know the shrimp on the bottom. And the other one's like, Fuck it. Just fuck it. We're not doing this anymore. That's pretty much how it was. Like, I remember the one chick literally, like, fell into the shelter and was, like, on her back, just, like, panting hardcore. And I think Gracie was trying to give her an orange or something, but it was it was pretty rough. Wait, I don't even know if Gracie made it that year. Um, but, yeah, that was one of my favorite wasteland memories to be honest a lot of my wasteland like favorite memories are stuff that they would never do now <laughs> um my favorite memory from that year was when that big dust storm started to kick up and me and Kristen just got back from the dinky dive <laughs> and we had food oh yeah and we had to protect the food from like the sand and all the dirt <laughs> And we dropped like a gator nugget. And I was like, no. oh, and it got instantly buried. But <laughs> it all equated to us in the very end, hunkering behind Alfred's truck like fiends, eating like <laughs> dog food out of a can. 
<laughs> that year was also Blue's first year. So I remember her and I were like huddled in the tent together. And she's like, oh, man, is it always like this? <laughs> it's like terrified. It's like, no, this is it's not always like this. But you know what? If you go to Wasteland, here's the thing. Like me and Bush have talked about this before, but there's been years where there's been crazy dust storms. There's been years where it's been super hot. If you're going to wait to go when it's not going to be super hot, there's not going to be a dust storm, you're never going to actually go. Like, it's going to be hot. It always is. It's always going to be windy. You just got to you just gotta force yourself to get out there if you want to actually have your adventure. Prepare to lose a costume piece, to have a costume piece destroyed, mm. or to partially die. Oh, yeah. I think everybody has lost at least one costume piece there. And that's why I like also don't bring something with you that is going to totally devastate you if you lose it. Like how many times have we seen people like in near tears talking about losing something? Like I never want to put myself in that position. Yeah. Like that one lady who lost her dog. Oh my gosh. I forgot about that. Yeah. Little known fact. When we first started going to Wasteland, they actually allowed dogs. Uh, not anymore. <laughs> Yeah, and then um, people lost them, and then they just said, you know what, it's too much drama, let's just not do it. And there was a girl that lost her dad's guitar that was hysterically crying naked in our camp. She, oh. was, a ni she was a nice lady. That's terrible. What a tragedy. <laughs> so sad. See, like, you don't want to see... You don't want that to happen. You don't want that to be you. It sucks to lose. And I know, like, it's tempting because... Like stuff, especially like, um, I was going to say antique things, but stuff that already has wear and stuff is usually stuff people have have sentimental value. Like, oh, I'm bringing my grandpa's like watch or something. It's like, don't, don't do that. Like, it'll yeah, look great, right, but you're not going <laughs> to, if it's going to devastate you to lose it, don't. If I can give anyone out there the single greatest piece of advice ever, that will probably help you in the long run, especially if it's your first year. And that advice is, Never go with too much emotional baggage. And if you do, yes. be prepared to um, like, like go with the mindset <laughs> that you're going to be like, you're going to let loose and try to forget. And the reason why, I don't mean to call out this chick. Oh, I know what you're Winter talking. Games, <laughs> at Winter Games last year, we ran into this chick at the bar who, um, who was just crying hysterically because I guess she just broke up with a dude and the and she had been with him ass. for she had been with him for like 10 years she told us so she was pretty devastated yeah she was like freaking the fuck out and it really sucks what she had to go through but um yeah she wasn't in a good spot i eventually walked her to her car and made sure she drank some water and went to bed but she wasn't having the greatest time you know, she actually looked a lot like one of my exes Oh, I no. just kind of wanted to make sure, like, she actually got to bed and didn't get, like, hurt or something. It was good. Like, you know, most, on the whole, most Wastelanders are really good people, um, which I think also lends itself to people becoming very vulnerable around them. Um, definitely, like Bush Neck said, you know what? Go there and leave the real world behind. Like, leave all that shit behind. Don't talk about work. Don't think about work. Don't think about anything in the real world. Just go and experience Wasteland as another world. Because you don't want to bring any of that emotional baggage with you. Any of those real world stresses. Like when we go, we don't talk about really anything from the outside world. Um, and I think it really helps. And yeah, like she was there alone. She was drinking. Stuff caught up with her. Um, luckily, people were very kind to her and stuff. But it was a rough place. Um and I think, I don't know, going there with emotional baggage, I can really easily see how that would happen, happen because I think I've almost done that a couple times. <laughs> um, especially if you are someone who drinks and you're kind of letting go of your inhibitions. So, yeah, I, I think that's pretty solid advice. Yeah. And if you can, on top of that, if you don't immediately need a cell phone for any reason, I also recommend going like tech free. Mm hmm. Like, if you're there as a photographer, that's cool. Or you want to take some pictures, that's fucking awesome. Do your thing. That's always fun. And it gives the entire community pictures and footage to look at. But the reason why I say try to go tech-free 
is you're at a you're at an event that only runs for a little less than a week. It's super limited. You know, the event will probably not be there forever. So why spend your time on Facebook? Something that will probably most likely be there in some form of social media. Well, you can spend all your time devoted at Wasteland, hanging out with all these people around the world, and getting to know some of the craziest characters you ever meet. Like it also us. really helps your immersion if you like go without a phone or put your phone in your car. That's what I do. The moment I arrive at Wasteland, the phone goes in the glove compartment, and I just try to forget about my job, past bindings, responsibilities that aren't directly related to the event. Yeah, let it go. Um, you're 100% right about that. Let that stuff go. Don't think about it and don't talk about it. Um, I made the mistake last year of talking about work a little bit. And I think you reeled me in and you're like, let's not talk about work while we're here, <laughs> which was good. You know, I needed to hear that. And please do the same. I, um, I used to bring my phone with me last year. I used it way less. Um, I carry a camera with me. So if there's anything I want to capture, I can just do it. Um, not having a phone in this day and age is really freeing. If you absolutely have to have it on you for family or whatever, what I do is I tell my family, I'm going to check my phone at like 8 a.m. every day. And I give them like a window of time. If something absolutely, you know, life-threatening happens, then I'll have my phone then in the morning and that's it. Otherwise it stays um, locked up in my tent. Um, it does make a big difference. And also like um, I'm bringing a digital watch this year. Um, you do kind of want to keep track of time sometimes, you know, if there's specific stuff you want to go see, but um, otherwise I wouldn't bother with that. Yeah. Cause if you're kind of a social media zombie, you don't want to zone out and do that while you're surrounded by wasteland. That's a waste of time. Um, I had a friend that did that one year. It was, I think his first year going and I kept catching him just kind of sitting in a camp chair, just looking at like his phone. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> we should make it a rule not to do that at camp. And for, for folks that play D&D &D or tabletop games out there, put your damn phone away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's not. You're, you nailed it on the head, I think, when you said like anything that's happening there, it's it's going to be there when you get back. Like, don't don't waste your time doing that. Spec says Specs in the chat says, dude, Wasteland has changed my life. Like, without Wasteland, I'd be much more quiet and even bigger pushover. It's a confidence booster. Yeah, it, it is. Fuck yeah. It is a major confidence booster, I feel like, coming from someone with zero confidence. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's been a pretty big deal in, like, my mental and I, I would even dare say spiritual development. Especially mm. when we first met Junktown. Remember oh that? yeah. Yeah, that was uh that was kind of a defining moment, I feel like. I want to do lives. a big shout out to Bryce, Zane, uh Davey, uh Kenneth the Red. All you guys are fucking awesome and I love you all. Ditto. We gotta get them on here at some point. Oh, we should... we'll get banned <laughs> off YouTube. <laughs> yeah, if anybody um Junktown has a good saying where it's like, if you don't want to go to bed, go to Junktown because the party is always on at Junktown. And I recommend you go visit them for your first year and come with an open mind. I usually make a commitment to sleep as less as I possibly can at the event. <laughs> because I always feel like I'm missing something, even when I do go to bed. And uh, Junktown is definitely a great place to party because they're one of the few camps that are still up at like 3 a.m. and there's always something to do there's always some trouble to get into I, it's I nice I love that camp it's nice too because um whenever anybody goes missing we know we can find them there <laughs> almost every single time i also just like their theme like literally junk it comes together really well and it always looks great it does we had the pleasure of actually visiting junk town when it had a uh, kind of a permanent home in brycelandia and uh, you can watch that on the channel. That's one of my favorite videos I think I've ever done. And Bushneck is heavy. Bush, you're, you're featured heavily in those videos. There, there's some great times, dude. Like, um, you know, if for some reason Wasteland, like, it's, you know, Jared sells it to Hot Topic and no <laughs> one can ever go again uh, for whatever reason. 
<laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Or are we? Uh, who knows? Um, money, money talks. Um, <laughs> I will always remember camps like Junktown. Um, I'm going to shout out to Uncle Zeke's uh, for being one of my favorite bars of all time. The first time me and Taylor walked. <laughs> oh my Zeke's gosh. It was like <laughs> literally stepping into another world. <laughs> and I'm like, man, did I die? Like, what happened? That was so much fun. I can't wait to experience that feeling again this year. Oh, yeah, dude. It's it's going to be great. Like, I say, you know, the moment we have enough hands to start building stuff with the event, let's just bust it out all hardcore, get it all done, right? <laughs> so we can start just experiencing, like, the event itself. You know what summarized my night, um, that crazy night after we went to Zeke's and went everywhere? Hmm. I um, I woke up in the morning. <laughs> and it's weird because that weighs on my how late you stay up. You'll wake up early somehow. Like I was remember, I remember I'm like, I'm going to try to sleep in. That didn't fucking happen. Um, I woke up and I had this stupid enamel pin that was on like the inside of my um, collar on my jacket. And I slept in my clothes from the night before. <laughs> And when I woke up, one of those enamel pins had popped off and it was stuck in my head, like the pin part. No! <laughs> I know. <laughs> Man, what a way to wake up to. So like, I remember, that was the reaction. I started waking up and it just slowly like dropped off my head. And I was like, ow, that was stuck in my flesh. And I got super mad and threw it. And I thought I lost it, but I found the pin actually today um stuck in my wasteland jacket so it must have got re-entangled in there at some point <laughs> what was the pin was it pearl it is the pearl pin yeah oh my god how did i get it <laughs> it was stuck in my head dude of course it'd be the <laughs> one pin to get stuck into you. <laughs> with its dopey smiling face because I, I just remember waking up that morning and feeling kind of rough and being like Ugh, and that just like falling off onto my lap oh man <laughs> that was a um, good night responding to specs over here so i don't think it's gonna happen but if the actual like raid air 51 stuff happens even if it's a small group that gets annihilated it will be <laughs> hilarious i'm looking forward <laughs> to the news that day i don't think it's gonna happen they already arrested some people just for like showing up there oh that happens all the time though before this was like even news uh we we're we we're doing like uh, that whole Area 51 video, and when I was looking up facts for it, I think they were saying that, like, eight people get arrested a week for trying to trespass on the property. Fun fact, uh, me and Bush actually have another show. Um, we have a channel that we co-host together called Geist and Gore, where what? we talk no about... We do, and the link is in the description. <gasps> um you can go there and you can listen to us talk about uh, conspiracy theories, monsters, everything, all the weird the world has to offer. And uh, we're going to be resuming that show on a weekly basis after Wasteland this year. Wow. Would you recommend subscribing, liking, and commenting to stay updated on all the current news? You know what, old pal? I would. And there's no reason why you can't because the link is in the description now. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yes. Oh! <laughs> anyway, we haven't even gotten to our prediction part of Wasteland. Do you have any other favorite memories that we're actually we actually can share without getting pulled? Oh yeah, yeah. Favorite memories that we can actually share without getting arrested and interrogated <laughs> by government agents. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um Remember when when Elvis's tribe used to do like the pig luau's and stuff? Yes, they were the Last Kahunas. Last Kahunas. Those guys were awesome. I believe Elvis still attends the event, and I I fucking love his face. I know he's a sweetheart. Um, I really liked how he got to. Uh, he showed up at like the Wasteland game night we had going on over like somewhere in LA, and he was actually a player character in my adventure. Oh, nice. It was a real blast to have him there. And Carl as well. Carl's a good guy. Um, but yeah, uh, us eating that pig, and there was like, uh, <laughs> and then you always you always mention it, but it was that really surreal moment where everyone is just 
chowing down on this pig and it's like zombies from dawn of the dead it got scary like it got intense i was actually filming it and i don't know where the footage is where like um tyler and gracie were biting it and then you started biting it. you guys are like freaking wolves like your eyes are like flashing in the camera light and then like more people just started showing up and taking bites out of it like animals <laughs> it was it was intense <laughs> that was that was peak wasteland <laughs> you guys were like fucking animals <laughs> you were your eyes were all glimmering in the light <laughs> It was insane. Is that when I went to uh, ham on the bone? <laughs> you think so? <laughs> that, that was a fun time. Um, my brother, my little brother, is a big shock to anyone that knows me. I actually have a kid brother. <gasps> and Golly I can't, gee. I can't stand him. Oh. Um, <laughs> he went, I think, back in 2015, I believe. <laughs> yes. He has been back at the event ever since, but he's going to be coming back this year. And the reason I mention this is one of my favorite Wasteland memories is I go to the camp and uh, I see him and he's he's chilling with the group. And uh, <laughs> Chandlers, which are also really awesome tribe members in our group, they they set up something called Jungle Juice. It was like an awkward oh. punch of some mixture. And he comes up to me. And he's like, oh, oh, he's like breathing really hard. And he's like, oh my god, is there alcohol in this? And he is just destroyed off his face. <laughs> and I'm like, goodness, you need to settle down. <laughs> I leave for a bit. I come back to that after some exploring. And he's sitting there in the middle of like this group of people within the tribe. A huge and group of people. There are people not even from the tribe there, too. Oh, I don't remember that bit. But... <laughs> sitting at his feet. Yeah, and there, he's, for some reason, singing the Steven Universe <laughs> song. <laughs> and he was playing the ukulele using his iPhone on like an app. Oh, goodness. Do you know he's bringing a ukulele and an actual guitar this year? I can't wait to recreate that moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's bringing two instruments this year, and uh, I think he's going to have a blast. He is, and he's, he's a lot of fun. I can't wait. Um, predictions for this year. What do you think is going to happen once you and TJ get there first? <sighs> I think what's going to happen the first day, um, and this is an educated guess because it happens every single time. However, we are coming, we are arriving earlier this time around. I think he and I will start set up. Um, he'll probably yell at me at some point because I won't be putting the tent together properly. Um, we'll see how much that we can actually set up. Almost every single time, it takes me a while to get acclimated to the heat. Um like last year I arrived as soon as I started building, I was like, yeah, I'm good. And then I all of a sudden got lightheaded and had like instant heat stroke. <laughs> so that'll probably happen again. Um, I don't know, like the first day without you guys, like if you could arrive earlier, it'd be great. But you know, um, it'll probably be us just solo building the tent and stuff all day. Um, I don't know. It'll be mostly work. Um, so I don't know. The first couple days are probably going to be pretty slow. I have no idea what to expect because I've never arrived there that early. And I don't know how much we can get done on our own without other people. I think once you and Zeno arrive is when probably most of camp is going to be taken care of. And then we can maybe start, I guess we can start helping with the saloon and stuff because we're going to have that as a major responsibility. I foresee setup not being a big deal. I foresee tear down being kind of a pain, to be honest, as far as um, this year. Well, I mean, when is tear down not a pain? That's true. It kind of sucks because like um, everything Saturday is the main party night, but it's really not. It's like Thursday, like Wednesday, Thursday. Um, because Saturday everybody has to party medium because the next morning is when everybody has to take everything down and it's kind of sad. <laughs> yeah, at this point, like you kind of wake up on Sunday morning and you're like grumpy and cranky. Yeah, it's not a it's not a fun feeling. Do you have any major predictions of like um 
I guess, because I think, I don't know, the weather seems okay as far as build and stuff. Like I said, I think build will be fine. Tear down, I'm a little concerned about. Um, I guess, I don't, do you have any weather predictions this year? I know it's like a taboo because people are really, um, people are really, oh, I just dropped my pin. People are very superstitious about mentioning the weather at Wasteland, but I think it's going to be actually nice this year. Superstitions are fake. And anyone that has them needs to get over that. <laughs> All right. So I made a trolling prediction on Wastelander Central not too long ago. And I'm I'm predicting the double W, the double wind this year. <gasps> oh, no. We're going to get hit by 120 mile per hour winds. <laughs> and it's the all of Tent City just get annihilated. Silent. No. Actually just be called death. <laughs> um, all these regions are going to explode. You're going to see like. Like like <laughs> wastelanders and like whole structures flying up into a cyclone and getting dispersed throughout the Mojave Desert. Uh, most people are going to be screaming and running from cover. I'm going to sit like on the top of like some hill somewhere, just laughing and drinking all the absinthe. Um, it's going to be great. And then right after that sandstorm dies down, uh, everyone's going to kind of like you know start putting the pieces back together. There's going to be, like, donations set up for the lives that were lost. Ooh, no. Like, like, a canned food drive. Um, you know, and all this, this people, you're going to see people, like, walk around with crutches. And you're going to be like, oh, nice costume. But it's not really going to be a costume. <laughs> and then we're going to get hit with a crazy rainstorm that's going to flood out the Mojave Desert. Okay, here's the thing. I know you're joking, but I would actually really like to experience rain at Wasteland one year. Except... I feel like it would turn all the sand into like horrific mud, but a light I, rain would be really nice. Yeah. Like a nice sprinkling, right? That'd be super nice. But we're going to get hit by this rainstorm. You're going to see a tsunami <laughs> coming and it's going to take the whole event away. The only thing left over will just be the main stage. And I'm going to show up on the main stage with the microphone and just drop the mic and leave. <laughs> That's a terrible weather prediction. All right, now my realistic weather. <laughs> <laughs> I believe we're going to have like mid-range kind of wind. Like it's probably going to be kind of annoying, but it's going to be okay for the most part. But I think the sun is going to be perfect. We're going to be sitting anywhere between 80 to 90 degrees tops for the mm. majority of the event. And the reason why I say this is... I recently just hit my one-year anniversary of living up here in the high desert. Congratulations. Yo, oh, yay, it's so cool. <laughs> I died out here twice. I love it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, we had this really weird like weather influx up here last year where right when this time hit, it was like raining consistently. We had snow in like early December. It was really strange. <laughs> That is really strange. And um, some people that like were locals were like, "Oh yeah, it was. It's like this this year. It's most likely going to be like it like this next year." They said when we get like weird weather patterns up here, it usually goes like in twos, like mm. two years of that particular weather pattern, and then it kind of switches up. Now that could be total BS. That could be some superstition. That could be like a great grandpa sitting around the campfire telling all his kids these bullshit stories. But, you know, I'm going to run with it. I'm for it. I'm for it. Do you have any predictions as far as, well, like, are there, are you going into this with any, like, major expectations? Because there's one thing that happens every single year and that I never prep for. And that's really, really wanting something in Barter Town because the broke life is real. <laughs> Oh, oh God. And I feel like that one of my predictions is that this year they're going to have really, really, really good stuff in Barter Town. We're going to see like the coolest stuff ever. I bet you anything that Junksmith is going to have the coolest stuff in the whole event. He always does. He always does. I'm if you go guys... to Junksmith and he's going to be like, all right, Meshnack, I mean, just something crazy. He's going to open up a gold loot chest, but he's going to require my credit card to open it up. And it's going <laughs> to give me a random assortment of common and mid-rare items. Ooh. Didn't you get a quad barrel shotgun from him? 
every year I pick up something from him. I picked up my giant axe from him that has like a saw blade as one of the axe heads. I picked up a flamethrower unit. That was cool. Uh, I like that. I think it's actually a six barreled shotgun. <laughs> oh my gosh, you need to bring that. I haven't seen it in a while. Oh yeah, this year I got everything compacted as far as my weapons go and like one single chest. Like when you see me unpack my stuff, it's going to be like four trunks. And you're going to be like, what the hell did you bring, Bushnack? But when I open <laughs> them up, a thousand things are going to fly out. And it's going to automatically build the camp without any of our assistance. Oh, finally. You <laughs> always get the coolest stuff from him. Um, you know, for as many, like, I always make it a point to buy something from him every year. Because A, he's my, he's my favorite shop to go, like, pick up stuff at. And B, like, I always believe in, like, bringing business to, like, independent business owners and small-time business owners. I think it's really important as a whole. And you can find a lot of them there. It's pretty cool. Um, like, somebody on another channel um, posted a video, and I'm not trying to be a dick, but all their footage was just of Barter Town from, like, 2014. So it kind of wasn't a great representation of what Wasteland was. And they were like, it's just a place to buy stuff. And like, no, it's really not. Um, <laughs> there is a small bazaar where you can purchase goods and trade for goods. And what's cool is that those vendors there, it's not like you're seeing like the swamp meat or something. These are like really talented artists and creators that make some really cool stuff that you can't really find. Like otherwise, there's some really cool shit you can buy there. As much as it seems like I just showed out the Junksmith, I love him. He's he's amazing. He every is. barter that shows up there, like every vendor that shows up, really does bring some awesome stuff. You can go to every shop in Barter Town, and every shop will at least have one thing you want to buy. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. That's always my experience anyway. Um, what I'm expecting to find this year, there are three things that I need to find at Wasteland this year. One, and I always shoot myself in the foot, but I need to pick up one of those like artillery rounds turned into a beer mug. Yes, I need to get another one. The one that I have, the freaking handle broke off. Really? I thought someone stole it. No, someone stole the, the cup I had after that. <laughs> it disappeared at New up. Year's. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, Speck says, you know who I miss? The original taco truck. I used to love them. When Bush and I first started going to Wasteland, there was a there was only one food vendor, and that was the taco truck that would show up. Oh, I don't think I got anything from him. Really? Like, dude, my first year at Wasteland, like I was seriously living like Mad Max on the edge. I remember we fed you. Dude, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go into story time mode. Everyone sit down around the campfire. Uncle Bushnack has a story to tell you, kitty. <laughs> um, so, like, I met the Death Caps um, probably, like, at the beginning of Wasteland 2013. It's actually a really funny yet very complicated story that I don't want to fully get into at the moment. Yeah, I, I debated sharing that as well, but I think it's it's too much. It, we'll have to have that as a separate video. We'll call that Bush Bushnacks and Taylor's incel story. <laughs> Uh, we're not we're not joking we're not joking like this is our own magic beard and this <laughs> guy was just the greatest cartoon character you'd ever meet yes and scary go on and scary. <laughs> but anyways <laughs> anyways so like i'm walking through the wasteland and i have my costume on i'm covered in this this janky armor and i'm like bleeding sweat right <laughs> and then i see the death caps in the dis in the distance but the only person I recognize is this guy that I knew that was a friend of theirs. And I go and I say his name out loud because this, this guy, long story short, was kind of a dick to me. And we, like, ended up not becoming friends. But I somehow, like, met up with him at the same time at the event, and it was really weird. So I see him, and I call out his name, and he just stops dead in his tracks, <laughs> slowly turns around, and he sees me standing head to toe on this armor with an axe. <laughs> and like there's like a weird like mexican type showdown like you see like the cotton weed like tumbleweed whatever the hell it's Do called they go across the desert know. you know there's like people in the background just kind of chilling out and like i take off my mask and i, I drop my weapon and i go to take <laughs> off my mask like the predator does whenever he wants to be all dramatic 
Like I unhook the tubes on the back of my neck and you hear like the little <laughs> sounds. And I like slowly take it off. And I think I actually dropped my mask on the floor for a dramatic effect. It was I think you did. It was completely unintentional though. And like he sees who I am, he recognizes me, and he's like, Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and I'm like, yes. And like, we all walk, we like walk up to each other slowly. And I think we even like shook hands and there was like a stare down. And then, and then you were like, I think you approached me like out of the group and you're like, you're Bushnack. I heard so many things about you. That's exactly how I sounded at the time. <laughs> I'm not trying to mock your voice. <laughs> whenever I do like, whenever I do voices for other people, I always have like a different tone for them. Let's be best pals right away. <laughs> <laughs> and like they invited me over to their camp, which was like in the corner of hell. It was. It was in deep hell. <laughs> so I went over there, and um, I remember like me and this guy. We used to play like, Monster Hunter all the time. And, like, we started talking about Monster Hunter, and then TJ in the camp was like, oh, Monster Hunter? And then, like, he flew over, and we started talking <laughs> about video games. I think he just kind of kicked off from there. Yeah, he loves Monster Hunter. But then I was like, okay, cool, you know, we'll talk later. Um, and then, like, I put my gear back on, and I walked away, and I was like, at some point, I'm going to steal all your friends from you. <laughs> Mark my words. <laughs> And then I left. I actually did say that when I walked away. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then laughed out loud to yourself. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then um, we, we had a really like heavy party night. We got destroyed. I think I was hanging out with... Um, I don't even know who I was hanging out with. But yeah, I, I look back on that too. I don't remember who I hung out with my first year. And like I was drinking left and right. I was hanging out at Titty City, which was was awesome i got some stories <laughs> on that tribe and, um, <laughs> i'm walking over and i'm just literally wandering the desert and i somehow show up at the death caps again and it's nighttime and i'm like i'm tired i'm exhausted and i hear did you guys call me by name i think so or did i just walk i think in? no i think we did yeah and they're like bushnack or something and i'm like oh crap it's you guys again how did i wander on the outskirts so far <laughs> and then I sat down with them and I ate delicious steak and it was a good night that was a good night I remember Cody fed you I love Cody he and should I, come more often yeah we need him back that was a weird year that was um back then the camps were like super far apart there wasn't quite as many people so it felt very vast and weird when you were like wandering around at night, because you could go, you you wouldn't see like a tent for a while. It was a really strange feeling. It was when the event was still pretty small. Fury Road changed. So, Taylor, would you like to give us your your word on like how you think the event was before Fury Road and after Fury Road? Oh yeah, it was everything boomed after Fury Road came out. Um, it's weird. There were two years where things boomed. One was the year after Fury Road, and um, Wasteland had kind of been heavily advertised that year, because um, that was the year we met Dominic as well. Um, because I remember at the time they had events at Fury Road screenings for Wastelanders, and I met a lot of people, like a lot of people that are have been going to Wasteland for a long time. I met for the first time going to their first Wasteland event at the drive-in screening. Um, because they had a big screening for Wastelanders at a drive-in. And that was a lot of people's first introduction to Wasteland, I feel like. Um, and that year, oh my gosh, there were so many war boys. <laughs> and there was a, several war boy tribes. The war boy tribe right now, the war spawn, which is like um, the official one. They're good people. But I remember that one year. Oh my gosh. Um, do you remember the, the war girls? <laughs> Um, no, but there's probably a reason why. They disbanded, and they were crazy, and I think they were the ones that actually sent their camp on fire. <laughs> what? Yes, <laughs> they they actually set their camp on fire, I remember, um, and that's when they had to, like, they really started 
they've always had very good security and stuff, but I remember like the rules really stepped up after that. Um, but Fury Road was interesting because it actually gave uh, the Mad Max fandom symbols that they could latch onto um, and kind of deeper lore that people could latch onto that I think they really liked. Um, you'll see the Morton Joe Citadel symbol everywhere. But, but prior to that, Wasteland felt like a major no man's land. There wasn't a lot of actual Mad Max um, costumes and stuff. I feel like they were kind of fading and that kind of reinvigorated everything. What do you think? The biggest thing that I pick up as a difference, and it's something you mentioned right before I brought up the Fury Road stuff, was the fact that you could wander around at the event at nighttime and not run into a tent or a camp for a while. Mm -hmm. um, Fury Road really made, I think, the population explode to the point where it's like there are so many tribes, so many camps. It, it almost, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna get like crucified for this comparison, but it almost gives off like a Burning Man vibe in the sense that there's just so much going on. Yeah. Uh, I, before Fury Road, it felt like a very like small family event. With a lot of people that kind of knew each other that also lived out there in California City and the Victorville area. Kind of niche. Uh, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, I was going to say I cut you off as well. <laughs> no, it's just I was just saying, yeah, it was it was very niche prior to that. And um, I don't think they quite estimated the growth they were going to have because that was also the year that all the camps were very close together, like when that event grew, it grew fast. And I remember um, it was kind of crowded that year. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't also the tickets sell out very early that year too? Yes. There's actually, it was kind of weird because I remember um, tickets sold out really early. There was a lot of people that made the jump from Burning Man to Wasteland. Um, there's always been some crossover but I remember that was when the community like kind of started becoming curmudgeon and I didn't like it. Like people were really resistant to the growth after that year, like because everything was crowded and there was a lot of new people. Like it seemed like a lot of the online community face land. Um, that's when they started getting very crotchety and overprotective of the community. I feel like, and they started blaming every bad thing that happened on burners for some reason, not realizing that like some of the major contributors to wasteland are burners. <laughs> like, I don't know what was, remember that year, like everybody was just blaming burners for everything that went wrong. Oh yeah. Everywhere you went, you know, there was some guy sipping his zero calorie white can monster energy drink. And he's like, <laughs> yep. Doom was a good game. And then they would say something like fucking burners right after that. <laughs> <laughs> Speck says pre Fury Road when I did my blackout drunken wandering, everyone was worried I wouldn't come back. Then boom, we go. No longer worry about it. Yeah, it went from being like um if you disappeared at night, people would be like, Oh man, I hope they're okay and didn't wander into the empty desert to like, oh man, they're probably at some party at some random camp because there were just so many camps. Like I got lost that year. I remember because they the camps are also close together and winding, and we weren't in the city at that time. So I remember getting like hopelessly lost for a while one night. Um, yeah, we we been, we we really should have like a really small kind of operable vehicle. Hopefully, in a couple of years, uh, we're planning on getting like an ATV or a quad we can bring out there. That would be so much fun. It's important to note that you're not allowed to drive at night, you guys. So if you're looking to do your night wandering, you're not going to be able to do that. But during the day, it makes a big difference to have a vehicle because it is a very large event. And it's, it is kind of hard to get your bearings. Like, I feel like we fall into it pretty easily. But um, the, the map changes every year. Like, not everybody's in the same place. So it's pretty easy to get lost out there. But I don't know about you, but I feel like that kind of lends to um, the adventure of it is that even if you've been going for years since the layout's always different, you're always kind of discovering something new when you wander around. Yeah, and one thing I do like is despite all the time we've been going, every year distinctively feels different. There are no two wastelands alike. Yeah, that's that's for sure. I don't um, know. I'm going to get a friend to come out this year, 
and uh, he wasn't able to come. And I told him, like, you're going to miss it. And he's like, well, I'll just go next year. And I'm like, that's not the point. <laughs> yeah, every year really is very different. And um, everybody's experience is very different. Um, it's it's a very interesting thing. You go out there and you kind of you kind of become who you want to be in a way because you don't really have any of the you don't go into it. It's not like at a party, like a normal party where everybody asks, like, what's your profession so that you can all judge each other on who has more worth. <laughs> you kind of just get to know people based on like the content of their character because there's none of that stuff to follow you there. None of that to inhibit you. It's pretty cool. You know, some people might think like we're in character as well. And I, sometimes I try to put on like kind of like a character voice. I'll talk in like a certain tone or something. But honestly, like, I think most people, they kind of go there and they feel that they can, like, express themselves in a way that they can't do in the real world. It's your truest self in a way. And it's very nice because I think one thing that I've changed, and I think most people can attest to this if they think about it, but after doing Wasteland a couple times, more than a couple times, um, I feel that even in my normal outside life, I've kind of become who I've been at Wasteland. I agree. It's really a nice feeling, to be honest. Yeah, you don't feel like you have to put on airs around people. And um, I think it took me a while to kind of embrace that. Um, I felt like I had to really put on, like, a character when I first started going. And then I think when we first went to, like, our outside Wasteland event, like, World War OC, um, and, like, the vault gathering, like, I remember, like, seeing people that I had seen at Wasteland for the first time outside of Wasteland, which is always a weird feeling. Um, and I was like, oh man, they actually like me. <laughs> like, they don't like my character. Like, they actually kind of like me, which is a really weird feeling. Can I bring up something somewhat unrelated? Of course. It's only because I don't want to forget about it. But earlier, you mentioned ticket prices for the event and how they used to be. 60 to 70 dollars um back in like 2013 mm -hmm. so something i want to bring up about that and um there's something that i i actually haven't seen anywhere <clears throat> the community. now when it comes to wasteland or central i honestly don't post too often not because i feel like i'm gonna you know like i'm shy or got any social anxiety just because lately especially lately I feel that there has been a lot of like controversy and arguments and post blockers and a lot of like unwanted and unneeded aggression on Wastelander Central. Mm -hmm. So I try people are snarky. Um, I agree. Yeah, they're really snarky, and you see a lot of like people divulge into really petty arguments, and I try to stay away from that. So most of the time, I just kind of sit from the sidelines and see what's going on maybe i'll post a gif maybe i'll i'll do a laugh react if i think something stupid or actually funny really depends on what i see over there but one thing i don't see that's ever addressed is not just the price hike of tickets you'll see that addressed commonly but what i want to bring up the fact is that if i remember correctly i remember someone in staff saying specifically oh one of the reasons why we changed the event space to this private land is because we don't want to keep raising prices for the attendees. We want to have a set price. If it's our own private land, we don't have to worry so much about that. Was that ever mentioned, or am I just cuckoo? You know, I'm not actually sure um, because I don't. I don't know for certain, um, but I do know that they cite the reason for the um, ticket price hike, and people ask a lot about that, like why is I guess for insurance purposes and that there's um, more people. Cause I know that there's different like insurance stuff you have to do, even if you own the land um, pending how many people are like attending. Like you have, if you have a party over like a hundred people, you have to like have certain insurance stuff. But do you know, um, cause I'm thinking, I'm wondering if that's why, because the amount of people has increased, but I don't know how big the event has become because the land that they have now is bigger than the previous land. Um, and I'm thinking that's probably the reason for the price increase. They're also getting bigger bands and stuff I've noticed to play. Um, I don't know if they get compensation. So it's growing in certain ways. 
<clears throat> Very true. I'm just, it's a bit of a concern because if it was stated before that one of the reasons they switched to private land was to try to keep ticket prices low, then that contradicts what they stated before. Because ticket I don't... prices have increased ever since they got the new land. Yeah, I know. I I know for sure. I've heard that they said that ticket prices will always increase, apparently due to liability. And I hope not too much more because it would definitely start to price me out personally. Um, as we get into three hundred, I wouldn't be able to um, afford that. So I'm hoping it doesn't um, increase too much more. It's still cheaper. A lot of people point out that it's cheaper than Burning Man, but Burning Man's really expensive. It's like five hundred dollars. Um, Spec says, I remember the EPA was all over H Park too and insurance. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure that there's a lot of liability involved um, because of the vehicles and stuff. Um, like I always say in the disclaimer, uh, I am not a part of Wasteland staff, nor am I officially affiliated with them anyway, so I really can't answer any of those questions. Uh, we're purely talking from speculation. Yeah, same here. I'm not involved with Wasteland staff either. In fact, they probably hate me. We're just long-term attendees. They do not. Eh, some of them probably do. <laughs> well, not the current ones. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> hey, I, I'm Bushnack. People either A, love me, or hate me. There is never an in-between. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. That's probably bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh god um, anyway other predictions for the future um oh god i think that this is probably okay so apparently the event is totally sold out um i don't know if last year was sold out so i don't know like i wish i knew a number of people that actually went so i could speculate like how many people are going to be out and about i think it's going to be going off in the den this year because last year, the Den, it was their first year together. And I feel like there was always a good amount of people. But we could, like, wander about freely. I think that this time it's going to be much more packed. I want to actually die at the Den this year. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, some people have achievement goals. Like, oh, I got to have a party with these guys. Or I got to get these caps. Like, fucking kill me. <laughs> Road Rash, Junk Town, Zeke's, Chug and Flug. I want to be murdered. Oh my Take god. <laughs> you gotta wait till at least after your wedding, because I'm sure your bride to be doesn't want that to happen. She can have my ashes. <laughs> Bring back an urn. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he wanted. <laughs> and knowing her, she'll just drop it before stepping foot in house. <laughs> it's an urn with the with the Zeke's medallion around it. And she drops it, and all the ashes <laughs> get blown away into the wind. <laughs> I want to stay up till the sun comes up. Hey, you say that, but you got to commit. Oh God, I did it the first year on accident. It was scary. Yeah, I'm going to be running it pretty close. I'm going to try, like, the last couple of days before the event, I'm going to get in, like, 12-hour sessions of sleep so that when I go to this, I have more than enough energy. You know, our new diet's probably going to help us a lot, to be honest. Yes, that's true. I hope so. I'm, I plan on sticking on that diet while at Wasteland. I'm not going to go off and end up eating a bunch of bullshit. I'm probably going to eat a little bit of bullshit. No, I'll stop you. You can't. You can't we, stop me. We gotta eat the falafel balls from, um, from um, Dinky Dive. What are you talking about? I tagged you in those, you <laughs> son of a bitch. Stop <laughs> name calling me. There was a post. Not gatekeep me. <laughs> no, that's that's just my online persona. <laughs> no, they have um, some kind of like. I don't know what they are. I think they're keto. We'll have to see. It's a falafel ball. It's got veggies and protein. It looks pretty freaking good. You're lying and I don't believe you. No, it's true. I should need to find it, but I don't want to screen share my entire screen because I don't want people to see my desktop background because it's cringe. Specs, tell me she's lying. <laughs> I, I don't care if it's actually true. Just say Taylor's lying. No, tell him of the falafel balls. He knows nothing about them. He was too destroyed last year. And the gator taters. 
And the potatoes are the best. You know what was really good that I want I, is those um those burgers that they had. Remember, tucked away in the corner. What was no. it called? <laughs> you we ate there. I know. I'm just I'm just messing with you. <laughs> Yeah, we're okay. hanging out with Macy. We're hanging out with Rosie. Uh, we're hanging out with uh, wait, Blue. Wasn't there that year, huh? Yeah, she was. Oh yeah, yeah. We're with Blue, and we got. Did we get some dice? We got some dice. We got some dice. For some reason, they were selling them out the counter where they were selling the uh, burgers, Brahmin burger. That's what it's called. Didn't they take like ninety five plus years to make you a grilled cheese? Yeah, it took forever, and then I ate it in like twenty seconds. That was great. I know you were really frustrated. Like everyone was eating the most delicious food. Those bastards oh, didn't even God. wait. <laughs> <laughs> they were cooking for a lot of people, so I don't hold it against them. But oh my gosh, I was like drunk starving. Did you hear about the new food item? Dinky's I was going to add to their menu. Are you going to tell me some bullshit right now? What is it? No, 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 no. I'm serious. They're adding koala nuggets. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> they have a eucalyptus seasoning to them. It's going to be really good. Do they still have the wombat sausages? The, d dude, they'll never get rid of the wombat sausages. Oh my god, those give you the worst fire hole. Or what it's about terrible. the shrimp on the Barbie? That's going to be a good one. Oh my god, I got to get some shrimp on the Barbie. Mm. You can go there and get some mad snacks. <laughs> yeah, you get some mad snacks at the Dinky Dive where you dive into a can and explode. So make sure when you go to Dinky Dive, you get the wombat sausages, uh, the ko koala nuggets, the kangaroo tail. I hear yours exquisite. And the Mac snacks. And the Mac snacks. You won't yeah. regret it. Um, yeah. yeah. Get get Mad Mac it. tonight. You get ma yeah, yeah. And meet Tom Hardy at the event. Oh, yeah. He was there last year. Yeah, he was so cool. He just stood in one place the whole time. He was like, oh, Bushnack. What a beautiful singing voice. And then he got blown away by the wind. Oh, no. I just stood there and watched and then walked away like I didn't care. Yeah, and then he ended up being in... Um... <laughs> then he ended up... I can't think of a single Tom Hardy movie that's come out since. Venom. <laughs> then he ended up being in Venom. That wind took everything from him, so he had to. You know what? That was actually kind of entertaining, except the ending. I'm not a fan of Tom Hardy's voice. You know, the ending was like when like he fought um, other Venom. Oh, look what Spec said. Falla Fallout Falafel Balls can confirm. All right, that's it, Specs. I'm going to find you this year, and you're going to regret <laughs> not taking my side in this. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a good year. Why are we talking about Tom Hardy? Well, we're talking about how awful that Venom movie ending was. Could but, only but kill the, the bad like, guys. The character, like, interaction stuff was kind of cool. It is oh. what it is. All right, it so is. other predictions. <laughs> right, I, honey, trip dog. What are you predicting about your wedding? Because we got to celebrate your wedding night, homeboy. All right, when was that again? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it Thursday? <laughs> um... Oh. <laughs> Did you forget? No. It's a th Thursday at 3 p.m. All right. Thursday We're going to have it at the Radical Rat... No. <laughs> the oh, Rabid Rad Stack. Yeah. For the longest time, I thought it was actually called the Radical Rad Stack. So you fool. Lie. And I'm like, what is so radical about this? Why so edgy? Oh, you'll, you'll like, see this year. And I'm like, oh, it's the Rabid Rad Stack. So <laughs> it's going to be in front of it. Uh, we're going to have an awesome cake that hopefully doesn't melt. And uh, for the first 50 people that attend, I have a special limited edition bottle cap for everyone that attends. Hell yeah. And then we're going to um, we're gonna get White Castle to do the catering for us. Ew. And then Claim Jumper is going to show up. It's going to be Ooh, great. Ooh, I like Claim Jumper. Yeah, make sure you bring your vouchers off the, the reservation website. They're free to download, and then uh, we'll have a great time. You gotta sure. put it's um it's claim jumper slash gator nuggets. No, it isn't. You big dum dum. What is it? Claim jumper slash wasteland weekend um wedding 
stuff. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> that's totally believable. <laughs> you could have just rolled with it, but... Once again, we aren't part of staff, so please don't ban me. I love you guys. <laughs> oh, shoot. I just hit my microphone. Anyway. Jared's um, going to be seeing this video, and he's like, those fucks. <laughs> I hate the caps. Well, we certainly earned it tonight. Are you ready for the after party in the den? I don't is... think I'm going to survive that long. You'll make it. <laughs> we'll make sure that you make it. So we'll have the wedding, the ceremony. We're gonna party, and then um, I don't know. I honestly like. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be straight with you, dude. Like, check it out. Like, zoom on in. Put on your goggles and check it. All right, hold on. I gotta put them on. Okay. Oh, okay. Are you ready? Yes. I have no idea what to expect when it comes to this wedding. Like, <laughs> she has handled 99% of it. Um. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to be there in a suit and just say some things and then kiss and then, I guess, a ring. Like, I'm all for it. <laughs> yes, that's totally, how a wedding goes. I'm totally down for this. But, like, the actual execution of it is going to be, like, it might be a little, like, overwhelming for me. Like, I'm going to be sitting there and a thousand people are going to cheer me on. And Aww. I'm going to be like, shut up. Just <laughs> eat your cake. <laughs> they don't eat the cake at the wedding. Wait, they don't? No, they eat it after. Oh, the same thing. <laughs> Shut up and eat your cake. They're just standing there confused. <laughs> Shut up, eat your cake. Stop caring. Just, just, just do something. <laughs> it's going to be good. Everybody's going to be looking at you to see what you can do. And then we'll have to dance afterwards. Are you guys going to dance? Are you guys going to have a first dance together somewhere? Uh Maybe, possibly. I don't dance well. Like I hate weddings. I'm completely blasted. I can. I, that's when I'll be able to dance. Same thing with karaoke. I can't do karaoke until the gin hits the bloodstream. Oh, we gotta do karaoke. Oh, waistline karaoke. Is that a thing? Is, yes, is it is. At, at Bikini Atoll. We should go do it. You're lying. No, I'm not lying. They really do have it. You're making. I'm looking at the Bikini Atoll website <laughs> right now. And they don't mention anything. I'm telling that. you. Let's see. Uh, Spec says, Bush, if I ever get married for whatever reason, you're planning it <laughs> annex to the priest with the shotgun. I mean, <laughs> I'm not really good at planning things, so if you want this to fall apart quickly, I guess I'll help you out. I want somebody to do... Um, it kind of sucks. Like, I wish I was lore married to somebody because I'd want to do a wasteland divorce. I think it would be really funny. Oh, who should you do that with? I'm not wasteland married to anybody. Who 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 would someone you would be wasteland married to? I don't know. Somebody that would leave me alone. <laughs> they would have to be really tall. Why? Because it's funny. Because I'm short. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe a nice girl who treats me nice and slaps me around a little bit. Oh, what about um? She wore like. 50 foot tall high heel boots. She put her like foot on that table and knocked the whole thing over at the wolves. Was that that the wolves? Oh, are you talking about Kundalini? Yeah, there we go. Her. <laughs> no, she already has a real husband and he'll probably get mad. Well, Wasteland Married, it's like role play, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, if he gets mad, he's, he's probably petty. I think she'd actually hurt me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> she would harm me. And I don't want that. Hold on one second. I'm gonna grab uh I'm gonna grab a white claw because the claw <gasps> is a law. The claw is a law. Give me one second. Oh shit, here we go. I just dropped my needed eraser on the floor. Get Wasteland married Uncle Zeke. Wait, at Uncle Zeke's or literally Wasteland Mary Uncle Zeke? Because I didn't know that Uncle Zeke was an actual person. At the event, I thought he was kind of a shadowy figure in the lore lore spectrum, is what I thought. But I could be wrong. Chime in right now who I should get Wasteland married with before I get real married and then have to get Wasteland divorced. Hmm. 
They How about it. you get Waste yeah. Unmarried to like the guy that did the whole One Punch Man costume? Oh, Max. He's my uh, favorite Wastelander. I don't want to get Wasteland married to a guy. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. <laughs> well, you don't know. Maybe he, he like identifies as something else. He identifies as One Punch Man, and that was enough. That was enough, and then he disappeared off the face of the planet. Tommy, Tommy beat the crap out of him in Thunderdome. Have you ever done Thunderdome? No. I haven't either, because I'd be afraid I'd get legitimately hurt. Yes, yeah, I'm afraid that I would either get embarrassed or actually killed. Yeah, I think maybe when I'm in better shape, I might. But I don't want to actually like I don't want to risk breaking my hand and never being able to work again, and then being like, "Oh yeah, I broke my hand trying to hit some chick with a boffer." Like that'd be a very dumb story. So low key, one of if I were to like the give a God. plan goal or like an achievement, like I actually want to join Davy's band. Ooh. I want to be like a backup singer for when like his throat sucks and he can't do it. Well, like you can do that now. I can, but I have no confidence in myself. Exploriso number one says, remember in 2012 when it was like one center road and the sound system blew out? <laughs> Actually, no. We didn't go to the event in 2012. We started in 2013. Let's see, in 2012, that was uh, the year of the Mayan calendar, and everyone thought everything was going to explode. That's so cool. That I wish cool we had year. another one of those, yeah. And then, um, like, someone, like, threatened to do something at work, and, like, we all had to go outside and stuff. Really? Yeah, there was like a stupid bomb fight or something dumb like that. But it was pretty awesome because like I got to do nothing and just go outside. God. Like they had us chill in the parking lot and I'm like, oh this sucks. I'm gonna go to Arby's and I actually went to Arby's. <laughs> well, you were thinking Arby's is what you're saying. Yeah, and it was fucking terrible. <laughs> was that twenty twelve? I feel like that was later. I feel like it happened a couple story. times. People hate my store. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I don't um, know. So, expectations for the entire year. Like, if I want to plot out what's going to happen this year right now in every detail. So, I work Sunday night, and I'm supposed to work the Monday night or the Monday night before Wasteland. But screw them, because I'm going to call out and start my vacation one day early. I'm going to come home Sunday night after work, pack all my stuff in. Mm -hmm. And then drive down to the event and sit in a line. There's probably going to be people already there just chilling. I'm going to eat 55 sleeping pills and then crash for like six or seven hours. Wake up at 7 a.m. and be ready to start building and doing stuff. Just make sure that you don't get or you don't arrive before 10 because they'll kick you out. Well, by the time I see now, I'm off like I'm off 10 p.m. on Sunday. But I'm pretty sure there's like a border or a line that's going to be there. And I'm just going to chill behind that. Yeah, just go pull over and sleep. Yep. I'm going to wake up, show up with a lot of machismo and energy, and just, just start helping building shit. You don't even live that far away. Why don't you go get a good night's sleep at the house? Um, because I don't want to have to deal with any stupid traffic or possible accidents during the day or the mm -hmm. morning. Just be careful. I wish will. you. I wish you could arrive earlier. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll call it Sunday. I don't think I have enough PTO for that. Ugh, work sucks. I'm starting my vacation this Friday, so I can panic pack my truck. What a hero! <laughs> Agreed. Yeah, I'm kind of going into this way, so I'm out a lot of predictions. I'm kind of going in with an open mind and hoping some uh, crazy, unpredictable shit happens. So we'll set up camp, get everything completely done that we can do. I'll set up the D content. Oh, my God. I was talking to TJ today, but I got some awesome additions to the D content. I got, like, these black light solar lights that Ooh. sneak into the ground. And I have two pairs of them, right? 
So when people walk into the D content and exit it, they're going to have to leave and enter through a sheet of black light. Ooh, that's going to be pretty cool. It's going to look awesome at night. We're going to get some cool photo ops. And it's going to be even better than last year. I still have to contact some photographers, see if they'd be willing to take some pictures of us in camp. Uh, my brother's bringing all his camera equipment. Oh, that's right. We can get him to do it. Yeah, if, he said he's, he's already willing. Oh my gosh, perfect. I want to take some pictures of us. He loves taking pictures just as a hobby, so he has no problem doing it. Excellent. He's very good at it. Um, Nero says, you think another RV is going to catch a light? I hope not. That was really sad. <laughs> they lost everything, and apparently they lived in that thing, so I feel really bad for them. Yeah, that sucks. Now, when you when you initially posted that specs, I kind of read it like, do you think another RV is going to get stuck like in the sand? And I was going to say, oh, I hope so. But I hope it's a giant sandworm that eats some, like from Dune. That would be cool. <laughs> the Dune, bring forth the Dune worm. Like, imagine you go to Wasteland Week and you get eaten by a giant prehistoric worm. That would be pretty metal. I found a praying mantis hanging out on my head one time. That was pretty cool. No, it wasn't. Stop talking. No, it was sweet. I love <laughs> praying mantis. <laughs> <laughs> so we set up camp. We do stuff, right? And then I would say once we set up what we can without everyone else there to set up their personal stuff or add their personal touches, let's just relax as much as we can so we have all this energy for the event. I will probably lend um, some help to the saloon should they need Same. it for setting up, but that's about it, yeah. Um, I do also want to visit Junktown. And um, we have a super top secret meeting with them this year at the event. Oh, yeah, don't I, broadcast that too much. Ooh, yes. I want to let everyone know that's listening <laughs> and watching us. That we have a super cool, awesome surprise that you're all going to want to jump into. Oh, that's true. I'm going to unveil this just in a couple of days, and it's going to be on Wasteland Essential. I can't wait. Do you know what I'm talking about? They're bottle caps that have a picture of Spinel from Steven Universe on them. People are going to lose their fucking minds. That's it. I'm reporting it. <laughs> no, that's not what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't reveal it. You should I make those too, though. Make. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's the perfect man. We probably chose the best profile pics we could <laughs> for this stream, honestly. <laughs> We're putting our best foot forward right now. <laughs> this guy is like multi-layered i need to find maybe i'll maybe i'll screen share it because um there's a lot of layers to this photograph do you think they like paid him or if it was like a hobby for him oh no he was definitely paid let me screen share right now <laughs> oh goodness okay so because look at how upset his face is <laughs> like he does not look like he's very happy he clearly looks like either a friend or like a guy that was like a part time model that got suckered into this <laughs> I love that the goggles are printed onto the shirt <laughs> like there's a lot to unpack here there's clearly the goggles that are <laughs> to scale <laughs> then there's the nerf gun Tucked into the pants, which are printed on the shirt. Um, when you made this post, there was like some guy that made another. He replied to your thread, and he's like, "He makes the rest of us look bad." And I just started busting up. <laughs> <laughs> Fut futuristic steampunk gentleman. Uh, like. This is what incels look like in the future. Oh, gosh. This poor man. He looks so... <laughs> Whatever they paid him, they did not pay him enough. And <laughs> look at the shape of the hat, by the way. It's not even a bowler. It's, like, flared in the back. Um, <laughs> like, is this on Amazon or something? Yes, you can buy this on Amazon right now. It's you only, like... Should. You should ask the seller to see if you can get the contact info for the model and send <laughs> this video. Well, I think 
that we should do is we should have a Death Caps Halloween party where we're all forced to wear this costume. Oh, man. I actually already have my <laughs> Halloween costume planned out for this year. Exploriso number one says, I remember you and Cousin Brucey chatting on the Wasteland board for the old Facebook page. Sorry, I thought you were there. Yeah, it's funny because um, I was just saying earlier in this that I did start out in 2012 on the forum, but it was either right after the event had happened or um, it was like about to happen when I got on there. So I was on that forum like every day. And Spec says cyberpunk in, in California 20, 2070. Man, <laughs> For that photo. Terrifying. It's going to be a good time. I'm it looking forward to my uh, Halloween costume. Is he either going to do the Emperor from Star Wars or Fidel Castro? Ooh. Not bad, <laughs> not bad. But I'm getting off topic with that. So we set up camp. We have our secret meeting with Junktown, right? This is mm. on the first day. And then we kind of like just kind of chill, relax, reserve our energies for, for you know, for Wednesday, I guess. And then uh, once the event actually officially starts, um, what do you want to do first? Where do you want to go? I think we always check out Barter Town first, right? Usually, right? So usually we walk around, get our bearings around the actual Wasteland City. Um, then we go around Barter Town, look around, because it's nice to get to the stuff early. Um, if you see something at Barter Town that you want and you pass it up, chances are it's going to be gone the next time you go there, honestly. Yeah, like, it's happened to me three times. It happens every single time. Um, so if you want something there, get it while you can. Um, so I, I'm pretty sure we'll do that, and then we'll just wander about, um, wander around Barter Town, Never Was, and all that, and get our bearings on stuff. Um, until we're usually forced to go back seeking water because we're usually dying. Mostly, uh, right? Yeah, it seems like there's not a lot of stuff that happens the first day, I feel like. So what we'll do is we'll go kind of hang around Barter Town, check up some of the main camps, right? And then we'll go back to the camp, rally up everyone for the opening of the gates. Yes. Come back, do that. Make sure we get a really good spot in the photo this year. And then after that happens, why don't we get lunch? I wonder, do, do they do the opening? I don't know if they do the photograph on the first day. Of, I think they do it Saturday. Oh, you know what? You're probably right. But we're there for the opening at the very least. Yeah, we should get lunch the first day. It'll be a good time. Uh, <laughs> we want plan. <laughs> well, I want to I wanna try the wombat sausage. It's keto. Um, yeah, the the uh, the koala nuggets are on my uh, list from the dinky dive. If they have the toucan jerky, then maybe some of that. Um, the lemur steak. Uh, I felt bad about good. that last time. Yeah, but it was good. <laughs> it zabooed my foos. <laughs> <laughs> so the lemur steak, surprisingly enough, when you look at the animal itself. It doesn't seem like they don't have much fat on them, but the meat has it's, it's rich in fat and it's great for a keto diet. I know, but like they're selling the tails right by it, like that was too much. Yeah, I got one, I put it on my belt right afterwards. Yeah, you look like Daniel Boone. Hell yeah, except cooler. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <post -talk. laughs> so, yeah, let's get lunch. <laughs> So we'll get lunch, and then we'll probably come back to camp and chill out, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then um, we're definitely going to go to Uncle Zeke's that night. Probably. Oh, the hell yeah. Hell yeah. I, I plan on spending... See, this is why I got to write down a little bit of a schedule to see the stuff I don't want to miss performance-wise, like the Wasted Saints and stuff. Because otherwise I'll be at Zeke's every single night. You know that's going to happen anyways. I know. I can't wait to arrive and kiss Cherry's head. Is her head still shaved? Uh, I don't think so. I'm not kissing her head if it's not shaved. You know, either way, she looks really adorable. It brings you luck. Cherry's pretty awesome. She's uh, also one of my favorite members to talk to at the event. Don't kiss her head without consent just because I worked it up right now, everybody. <laughs> hey, listen. Consent is really important in the wasteland. And I'm not even joking around, but you better use consent every time. Seeing of which, Wild Mule is teaching a um, 
It's like how to prevent sexual assault course. It's actually going to be pretty cool. We got to go to that. I got to remember the time. Oh, really? Yeah. So then you can learn how to like punch somebody in the mouth. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I love and that. other things. Yeah. He's a great guy. <laughs> Now that you guys brought it brought it up, I'm going for the falla fallout falafel and then the mac and cheese. I can't eat the mac and cheese. <laughs> I can't eat it. It makes just, me really sad. Just just have a couple of spoons of it and I'll have a couple of spoons of it. You know what? That's just gonna lead to us like going full fucking bore. It's like we, we share a mac and cheese, right? And then it just cuts six hours later and at Junk <laughs> Town, we're just eating all the junk food on the table. <laughs> That's what I'm worried about. We have to stay strong. You just see me wolf down an entire bag of Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> yes! I died before shooting cold over oranges. Yeah, I, uh, I'm going to try my best to stay on this diet as strictly as possible. It's going to be a difficult, but... You're going to say that you say that now, but then we're going to be chilling at Uncle Zeke's, and Bryce is going to bring to you the biggest strawberry ice cream with whipped cream. Oh, man. That'd be great. <laughs> He's going to be like, hey, Taylor, want a bite? And then you're going to look at me. I'm going to look at him. And we're both going to nod at the same time. Eat that ice cream and be tripped off our fucking mind the whole thing. <laughs> that sounds like a good time. It's always a good time. We can take a break for some ice cream. I have a feeling because we have so much like pent up annoyance and stress from this year. That Wednesday night is going to be a heavy party night. Oh, going. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh, my gosh. I can't wait. Like, it's going to be it's going to be pretty crazy. And then we're going to wake up in the morning. We're going to go to bed in the morning and wake up in the morning. <laughs> and then. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm serious. We're going to go to bed like at 6 a.m. and wake up at 9 a.m. We walk in, put a blanket on, and then just get up after. <laughs> I gotta condense all my sleep down into a few hours. <laughs> I'm gonna bring a couple energy drink options that are keto friendly that are gonna be really good for us. Do you want some? Yes, absolutely. Please. Dude, I've been having this lion's mane mushroom powder. That's Ooh. awesome in my protein drinks. That's the stuff that Tyler drinks, and I've always wanted to buy some. It's supposed to be super good for you. It is. I'll bring uh, I'll bring the bag I got, all right? <laughs> yeah. I remember, um, not last year, well, maybe it was last year, because I think it was at that Brahmin Burger, there was this chick that we were talking to, um, I don't I was going to say, I'm not going to say her name, but I can't even remember it, actually, um, and she was, like, she's in the fitness group, and I remember she was talking about, like, oh, yeah, like, I don't even like, like, I don't like junk food, like, all I eat is fruit and vegetables, and she was, like, bragging about it and stuff. And um, she was in, like, really, really great shape. But then I remember that night when we were at Brahmin Burger, like, she was just, like, eating the fries like a beast. <laughs> she, like, smell, like, she reeks of, like, gin. <laughs> like, she was just drunkenly <laughs> eating the fries. And then she had the big gallon of uh, that Thai iced tea because they were selling it for, like, nothing. Uh, good times. Yeah, inhibitions go out the window. I'm going to miss there not being Thai tea this, this year, though. I love Vic, and I'm going to miss him. I know. That's a good... That was a Wasteland staple as well. I also really liked Vic's shows. Yes, Vic put on a great drag performance that was a lot of fun. I think they're doing a drag show at the Wasted Saints. Um, Vic won't be there, unfortunately, but... I want to see some of that stuff. I like when they do the um, like the weird contortionist acts and stuff. So I'm down for that. Um, let me ask you this: Are the Badland Savages different from the Wasted Saints? Yes. Um, okay. The Badland Savages, I really like them. Um, there's a girl in the Badland Savages that I really want to be matched up with in a youareweighted.com, but I don't think she'll say yes to me. Um, they play like the drums. They do. Uh, I'm trying to think. They they. I know they play the drums. They do some like major acts. They're pretty cool people. The Wasted Saints are the ones that have the huge camp where they put on the shows. Um, and it's all about. They wear like uh, skull makeup and stuff. It's kind of like it's. They always say it's southern based because they're 
camp looks like a southern porch and it's really cool. I'm kind of disappointed none of them put on like fake southern accents because they say they always they always say it's about southern hospitality, but they're really cool and they have their own stage where they put on crazy stuff. Remember we saw that chick doing human blockhead last time we were there? Dude, I can't <laughs> even remember what I ate for breakfast yesterday. <laughs> How could you forget? It was so cool. There are so many times when you're like, Bushnack, remember when we did this? And it's like a dice roll on whether I do or not, especially <laughs> at Wasteland. Now, do you remember when we were wandering around last year, we met up with Elise, and then we found that weird, like, hidden bar that had, like, the mead stuff in it. Yes, the Sunken Region. That was awesome. That was, and they're doing a special mead tasting this year. Davey's invited, and I want to see if I can, um, or rather, if we can tag along with him. Didn't we need, like, a password to get inside that bar or something? Yeah, it's a speakeasy. Okay, we gotta do that again. Yeah, we gotta go. It's so much fun. That place maybe is we'll, great. Uh, maybe we'll trade them some of that new currency. <gasps> You're Actually. right, that's a good idea. Um, What about that place that had, like, that game where you had to find the crabs and solve some riddles? They gave us that super strong drink that they said um, was irradiated and give you extra limbs. Oh my god, that drink knocked me on my ass. That was, that was a fun. fun. Place. We never did find the crabs, though. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm starting to semi think that those crabs weren't even real. No, they were. Somebody posted about them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Wasted Saints had yoga, and I got tricked into going. And it, hey, don't talk crap about their yoga. <laughs> what about Post Apocalypse? I, I really like the people who run that. I don't know how they justify it because, um, fun fact, if you're serving food in mass amounts like that, you do need a license. So they put in, like, a lot of work to make that happen every year. And they make very good pudding as well. That I can't eat now. <laughs> I, saw I can't video. eat any of that. <laughs> so remember those faceless merchants? Those guys are pretty cool, too. I do adore them. But I saw in like uh, it was like a wasteland kind of like a mock-up video of all this cool stuff there is. It's, they're doing like interviews with certain tribes. Mm -hmm. One of the faceless merchants has like a secret room or something, and it's like behind a bookcase. You pull a book out, and it's like a it's like a hidden VIP lounge in the tribe. Their their whole setup is really cool. Um, Elenthris showed me, and it's in the video, and I haven't edited it yet for this past year. I got to go up on top of that tower um, with them, and it was really cool. Um, they have quite a setup in there. It's really impressive. If you guys get a chance to check it out, don't just pass it by, because I know it looks like a facade, but yeah, Bush is right. You can actually go inside there, and there's a lot of stuff hidden in there. It's really cool. I actually made that mistake uh, last year. I thought it was just like a, like a cool kind of like a mass decoration background or something. And I, it felt kind of intimidating, so I never actually went inside of it. I felt like it was trespassing when I got close. I felt that way about the red rocket. I didn't know that you could actually go inside because it was always the doors were always shut, um, and it was lit up. But since it, the doors were always shut, I didn't know if like you were allowed to just wander in there. But apparently, like it's really cool inside that you can go inside. But. Um, I didn't know. So if you do have a camp that has a door that can shut, um, if you leave it shut, people really, you kind of have to have a sign telling people to come in because there's sort of an etiquette. You don't want to just wander through camps um, and people really won't know whether they can come in or not. Cause I did, I did feel like I kind of missed out on that this year. So I didn't know. Someone on wasteland central recently posted like a PSA saying, you know, don't wander into camps and invited and like steal things or take things. And yeah, sometimes that happens. But I think in my personal experience, intruders in camps kind of rarely ever happen, at least in my experience. Um, Considering how big the event is, it happens pretty rarely. Um, we have a, like, a like a decontamination tent set up. Uh, that's kind of like the front door of our gate. And even though it's actually open and there's no like door obstructing the view, we had a lot of people that like I just they just felt intimidated or uh, or kind of shy and they didn't really want to enter unless they had our permission from inside the camp. 
So like people like would stand on on like the outside of the barbed wire and they'd be like, death caps, you know, can we come in? And I'm like, oh yeah, it's open. Which is nice. Just come on through. This year we're gonna have an actual sign saying that we're open, so that pe hopefully people will know just to come through the decontamination tent. Maybe we should get like a wooden sign, right? Maybe we should get one that flips around for open or closed. Yeah, I wanted to. Um, I haven't finished it yet, but one side will say like "Welcome, comrade," and the other side will say "Go away, comrade." <laughs> the other side will say "Fuck <laughs> off and die." <laughs> no, <laughs> we must be evil. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you really should have a sign um, just because people don't know. And they usually are pretty good about asking, it seems like. What would be the worst thing to happen this year at the event? Like the most unideal thing to ever happen? I think another, another heat wave just because um, that was my worst year. Um, like that was the year I probably did the least during the day. And I do feel like I missed out on a lot because I was just like dying from that. Um, also, I really hope I don't get sick again this year because last year I got sick. I was forced to take Benadryl and it like knocked me on my ass. I actually got sick today. Oh, no, really? Yeah, like I have a, a slight sore throat at the moment. This always tends to happen before the event. However... I'm going to go to urgent care probably Wednesday night or Thursday early. <clears throat> day off. I'm literally going to walk in and say, hey, I have bronchitis. Give me an antibiotic. Go in there for maybe 30 minutes tops. Get a prescription for antibiotics and just take it. And I should knock out in a few days. Yeah, nip that in the bud because it sucks being sick at Wasteland. I felt so bad because like... I was passed out on the ground, and I guess some people, I think I know them on Facebook now. Um, I mentioned this in my my post Wasteland vlog, but they came by because I specifically said, like, oh, if you watch the channel, come by. And they're like, hey, we watch the channel. I was just laying dead on the floor, face down. <laughs> and I was very unfriendly, and I feel really bad about that, but I was super sick. Yeah, not to make you feel any worse about that, but um, I think you like retired in the tent a couple times. Like, you just went to go chill in there. And we had people like looking for you, like, oh, hey, we're looking for Miss. And I'm like, oh, she's kind of napping at the moment. We want to come back later. <laughs> it sucked, man. There's nothing worse than being sick at Wasteland. Yeah, that is pretty garbage. That would suck. It does suck. So take care of yourselves, you guys, and definitely be wary of that stuff. I'm trying to think, is there anything else we should say before we wrap this up? Any other... Uh... Do you think there's going to be any announcements, any craziness? Um, kind of on the note that we just talked about, I would suggest for anyone going uh, on a repeat or going for the first time, honestly, try to get as much sleep and rest as you can before the event. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're dumb like me and irresponsible and you're going to be working on costume stuff right up until you leave, you're going to want to try to get some rest or else you're going to be exhausted when you go. And there is nothing worse than that while trying to build yeah, I agree. It's absolutely horrible. Um, and bring medication with you. Um, don't bring Benadryl because it'll knock you out. But bring some like minor medications with you in case you get a cold or something. And bring vitamins because they do make a big difference out there. As well as electrolyte tablets. Electrolytes, uh, vitamin B12. Um, stuff like that to try to keep your energy up and keep your body like metabolizing properly. And I would recommend, because this might hit everyone at some point, bring some Pepto-Bismol. Yes, absolutely. I forget that almost every year, and it does help. Um, and also, make sure you're drinking a lot of water during the day. Stay hydrated at night. You will not be able to sleep in. I guarantee it. Um, if you're staying up super late and thinking that you're going to be able to sleep in, the sun rises, and it gets very hot by, like, 8. Like, I've rarely slept in past 8 at Wasteland. Yeah, granted that I think we're going to have a much cooler year this time around. Um, you, A, don't want to sleep in too late because of, you know, the heat. And then the fact that uh, you, you might be missing out on some stuff going on. And wear some and bring some blankets and make sure that you're warm at night because it gets friggin' freezing. And it'll be impossible to sleep when you're freezing to death. And if you can't sleep, go to Junktown. <laughs> yeah, we'll be there. 
<laughs> we'll be there. We'll hang out with you. We'll make bad decisions together. I honestly probably won't remember you. If you come to Junktown at 3 a.m. to meet up with me, like whatever we do that night, it, it's probably going to be forgotten. I'm sorry in advance. I'll remember. That's, that's just the nature of the game. I'll be there to record it all. Oh, and yeah, it'll live it on this channel forever. And then we can go to jail. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh okay let's call it all right guys oh. so you guys this is your intro to bushnack if you'd like to see some more uh shenanigans with he and i please subscribe to geist and gore you can hear us talk about all the weirdness the world has to offer and uh thanks for joining me bushnack it's nice having someone else on here to talk to yeah right it's a uh, pretty awesome opossum and um yeah uh don't forget to subscribe Smash, smash that like button, uh, comment, uh, share uh, to like all your like social media pages, and uh, click the links and um, buy all this stuff from the digital stores. And uh, come to, when you're coming to Wasteland, come find us at Junktown and uh, come see Bushnack off as he gets married at uh, yeah. the Rabbit Radstag Saloon. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be pretty freaking cool, <laughs> yo, G. And, uh, Last word, uh, don't even trip, dog. Don't even trip, dog.